The Agam, then. It begins. Today there is a gale blowing up from the Levant. The morning came like a yellow fog along a roll of developing film. From Bivery, across the foaming channel I can see from the window, the river god has sent us his offering. Mud, in a solid thorny line across the bay. The wind has scooped out the very balls of the Potamas across the way, like a mammoth evacuation, and bowled it across at us. The fishermen complain that they cannot see the fish anymore to spare them. Well, the rufous sea scorpion and the octopus are safe from their carbide and tridents. Deep water life utterly shut off, monumentously obscure behind the membrane of mud. The winter Ionian has lapsed back into its original scenery. The slitter of rain along the roof. It bubbles in along the chinks of the windows. It boils among the rock pools. Today, at dawn, for we could not sleep because of the thunder, the girl put on the gramophone in the gloom, and the competition of Bach strings, resonous and cordial as only gut and wood can be, climbed out along the murky panes while the sea pushed up its shafts and coils under the house. We lay there in bed, dark as a dungeon, and mourned the loss of the Mediterranean. Lost, all lost, the fruiting of green figs, apricots. Lost the grapes, black, yellow and dusky. Even the ones like pale nipples, delicately freckled and melodious, are forgotten in this morning where our one reality is the Levantine wind, musty with the smell of Arabia, stirring the bay into a muddy broth. This is the winter of our discontent. The air is full of the fine dust of the desert tombs, the Arabic idiom of death, and the panic world is quite done for, quite used up and lost. The suppressors are made of coal. Their forms stipple the landscape like heavy black brush strokes on a watercolour whose, fer whose fatality has been rinsed from it. Yes, winter. Winter everywhere in these nude and of its symbols. This is the day I've chosen to begin this writing, because today we are dead among the dead. And this is an agon for the dead, a chronicle for the living. There's no other way to put it. There is a correspondence between the present, this numbness, inertia, and that past reality of a dead, whose meaning is symbolic, mythical, but real also in its symptom. As if lying here in this mimic dead at morning, we were recreating a bit from a past. A crumb of the dead we have escaped. Yet, even though the wild ducks fall in a tangle of wings among the marshes of Bivery, and all the elements are out of gear, out of control, even though the sea flogs the tough black button of rock on which this, our house, is built. The correspondence of deadness with deadness is complete. I could not have begun this act in summer, for example, because in summer we sit along the wall on our haunches and listen to the figs bursting. The sun dries up what is fluid of agony in us, laps us, in a carapace of heat, so that all we know is nothing, sun black, Egyptian, nothing. The membrane gathers over our eyes as they close, and only the black bubbles of torpor cross and recross the consciousness as if born from lava. The milk of sentiment curl, curls in the veins, and a stringency witters humanity, hair freezes along the scarp and witters to soft gold shavings along the ties. The very nipples turn hard and black on the breasts of women while the figs roast. Teats like dark plugs of wood for the fishermen's sons. Well, well, one cannot help thinking this is such a dawn, when the wind is filling the room with the evocative smells of the dust and the nascent fuss of the tombs. The stale explosions of ancient life breathed coldly on us like lepers' breath. You are so pale, and done for in the morning. Pill, the face on the pillow, as ancestral as effigies, while the rotten smell of the crusades blows damply in on us. This is where I saw the girl get up from bed and brave the cold for a moment. Carrieth it. 
a dance step among the sinews of music, a miming geek. For a moment, the summer almost burst into bloom again, asphodel with the brave white brush, pavan of the merry peacock, or wild geese hanging across the moon, and the invisible archer somewhere watching, hand on his empty quiver. Ah, but here we only have the dregs of yellow smeared across the window panes, and the unclean sea, and the flesh that quails at the icy contact of bone. Then I knew, all at one, that we share that correspondence of death with the season, and with all those other seasons which oppress me when I begin to write of them. No mummies, chunks of tissue latched to bone, no pillars of salt, no cadavers have ever been half so dead as we are today. <laughs>